Right now, all of you have this photo in front of you. This is your handout. This is a political cartoon. This political cartoon was drawn by an artist trying to show you what has changed in Europe. Things that are going on and the effects of the Euro, the effects of the European Union, all of these things. Political cartoons are cartoons. It's not the Daffy Duck, it's not the Family Guy. Political cartoons are actually going to be something drawn um, about something topical. T typically you see it with politics, uh, what's going on in our government, or what's going on between countries. Um, if there's a war going on, if there is uh, suffering in other countries, and not all of them are funny, not all of them are as easy to look at as something like this. Sometimes it's showing um, kind of the evils of the Grom, or sometimes it's showing um, some of the hardships that they're having in Australia. So as we go through our political cartoon here, we're going to use our dip method. Now this is the method that we use whenever we see a primary source, we're checking happenings in primary sources using dip. So right now, this colored photo right here is the same exact photo that you have on your worksheet right now. Please make sure your first and last name are at the very top. We're going to go ahead and go through this. So when I look at any sort of primary source, and primary sources can be uh, written statements, but this can also be uh, things like political cartoons. This is something that was drawn by an artist trying to show you something. Now this right here, this political cartoon, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to use dip to kind of analyze everything about this photo using um, all the methods that we know so far. All right? So the very first step that we have to do is right over here. It starts with the letter D. Can you go ahead and raise your hand and tell me which step are we talking about that starts with the letter D in dip? Melody. Describe. Describe. Uh, we are describing, but we're using something else. We're actually finding something else. Nice Details. Job. Details. Details. Oh, Absolutely. Details. And that's okay. <laughs> details. Now, when we find details on a picture, or we find details in a quote, what are we using? What body part are we using? Are we finding it with our hands? Reggie, what do you think? Rock. With our eyes. Absolutely. So in the little box, you can draw your best set of eyes. We are using our eyes. So since we're using our eyes to find details, I want you guys to go ahead and take about 30 seconds. And I want you to look at this photo. You can use the color version up here. You can use the regular printout that you have right now. Take 30 seconds and look. Find me as many details with your eyes as possible. I would like at least at four. There's space for six on there. So go ahead, take the next 30 seconds, look and write down. What are some of the details you see with your eyes on this photo? Only this photo. Mm, you tell me. There's little names on there. Now, when you look at details with your eyes, these are some things that you can find with your eyes. Uh, there can be names. Names. Uh, titles can also be in there. Um, Let's see, objects, color, sometimes that's really important. Um, it's just, what's the stuff that you see? And can you label it? So I'll give you guys about 10 more seconds. Give me at least four, and if you have a couple blank, that's fine. I want you to fill it in as we go along as a class. That's a really good one. All right, so everybody's got at least four on their page. Going through here, I want you to go ahead and tell me what's one of the items. If I call on you, I'm going to use a six. Uh, if I call on you, I want you to tell me what's one of the things that you see with your eyes, Christopher. What's one item that you see with your eyes right here? An eraser. An eraser, absolutely. This right here, right over there, is an eraser. 
So that eraser right here, that's really important. In fact, Christopher, what does that eraser say on it? Euro. Euro. Very cool. It's spelled just like that. Now, as we go through, looking with our eyes, we saw an eraser, it has the word Euro on it, right? We're not interpreting anything else. Isaac, what's another thing that you see with your eyes? Water. Water, absolutely. Well, he sees this water here, 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 here. Absolutely. Now, more importantly, Isaac, what's in between that water? Land. What do we call that land that we see right here? It has a name, right? It has a bunch of Europe. names. Europe. Absolutely. We see Europe in our map. Because now we're looking at something that we can identify. We're actually looking at a map of Europe. So, going through maybe one more item that we see with our eyeballs. What's another thing that we see with our eyes? Melanie. Um, I don't know if those are continent. Well, it is a continent. So we see the continent of Europe. We see part of the continent of Africa. So what are some other things that you see with your eyes? You don't know? Uh, one is, Melody, I'm going to come back to you. All right, I want you to think of one in just a minute. Travis, help her out. What do we got? The razor. The little dots, right? So this is something that Travis sees. It might be harder to see on your printout, but Travis sees a whole bunch of eraser pieces. Anytime you take your eraser and you go on your paper, what's the next thing you have to do? You have to go like this. Right? Every single time. That's this stuff that's left behind, right? So eraser bits. Erase this, right? It's going to show us what we're going to be seeing later on in this picture. Alright, so what's another thing that we see with our eyes? Another detail that we see. She's first for you, What's another detail that we see with our eyes? Luis, what's one thing that we see with our eyes? Europe. Europe. We have Europe. So we have the continent of Europe. We have eraser bits, we have an eraser, we have the thing that says Euro right over here. What's another item? It could be a name, it could be a title. France. I'm sorry? France. France, right. Oh. France, right. <laughs> and it, if it seems easy, it's still okay, because we're just looking with our eyes. You might be looking at these and you're like, oh, well, like, it's obvious, I'm not gonna label that. No, absolutely. So, I want two more items, right? What's another item that we have? Now we're seeing something dumb. So we're seeing something different. So Melanie, let me come back to you. Reggie pointed out these red dots right over here. What do these red dots mean? They're borders. Absolutely. So red dots or borders. Absolutely. So now that we're seeing all of these things with our eyes. And if you notice, if you go outside right now, there are imaginary lines that we call borders. They're not actually there. If you go right over here between Spain and France, you're not actually going to see a red painted line on the ground. It's not going to be there. They're just imaginary lines. In fact, they're putting lines in between countries. So, we went through the details with our eyes, which is great. You guys did a fantastic job. We have to go to our next step of our dip process. And that's right over here. So on the right-hand side of your page, it starts with the P and the K. What does the P and the K stand for? Prior knowledge. Prior knowledge. Absolutely. Prior knowledge. So. Prior knowledge, if I'm finding my prior knowledge, if I'm trying to figure that out, what part of my body, what thing can I use and draw that could represent prior knowledge? Carlos, what's one thing that I would draw to find my prior knowledge? 
My memory. Honestly. Brain. Brain. Absolutely. Thank you, Coach. So I want you to draw your best brain. Mine looks like cauliflower. That's that's my best brain. Right? It's like a sponge bubble. But for your prior knowledge, we actually want you to take all of your prior knowledge of this right here, of this either subject, or in this case, continent. Uh, we also talked about currency. So the prior knowledge that you have, we have a few questions for you. Now, some of them we've already answered, which is okay. So if you want to go ahead and raise your hand, you can let me know, what do you think? Which continent is pictured here? Europe. Europe. Yeah. Right. Of course, right? Duh. It's even right here. That's actually not on the title anymore. Sorry. So this right here is the continent of Europe, right? Bunch of countries all inside. Now, what is the purpose of an eraser? Just the idea. What does an eraser do, Andrea? What do you use an eraser for? To erase. To erase, right? What's another way we can say that? Cut. So we use it to erase things. We use it to get rid of things, right? Right. So instead of saying to erase, maybe to get rid of. To delete. To delete. To, all right, so oh, to get, oh, that's right, to delete. So to delete, right? Yeah. That's really cool. That's a really good way. Yes, yes. That goes fine. All right, so what do the dotted lines represent? We kind of answered this earlier. All these dotted lines right here. The borders, right? So the border, the borders in between these countries. Now, if you guys want to back up in history, Europe has a long history of conflict, right? Even in our modern era, World War I, World War II, we've had the Holocaust go through there. You've had the Cold War affect a lot of the countries in Europe. Going through all that history of conflict, even further back in time, you had colonialism, you had wars, battles, fought before there was even gunpowder. So that long history of conflict, Europe realized that they can make a lot more money, they can be much more prosperous, and they can become more of a developed continent if they did a few things. If they cooperated, if they banded together. So, what group do most of these countries belong to? In fact, 27 of these nations in Europe belong to this one specific group. Does anybody know what that group is called? What do we call that group? Reggie, what do you think? United Kingdom. United, no, it's not the United Kingdom, although that is right there, Great Britain, United Kingdom, and they had a large... Oh, Russia. Not Russia, it's right here. Oh, oh, yeah. European oh, Union. Union. So, the European Union, or the EU, so the European Union, this, this European Union right here is a group of 27 nations, so 27 different countries come together and they work together, they trade, they actually have their own currency, their own type of money. Here in the United, the United States, we call ours the dollar. Does anybody remember what type of currency the European Union uses? Euros. Euros, absolutely. In fact, that's what this is right here. This little symbol, it looks like this. It looks like a big old C. Isn't that on an iPhone? Yes, when you go to your symbols part, yes. So this right here, this is the euro. 
There's a lot of symbols out there for currency. The dollar looks like this, right? Yeah. Now, in each country, like for instance, when you go to Mexico, a peso is not equal to the dollar. It's not one and one. I think right now it's actually six pesos per dollar. But the European Union, their euro, one euro is equal right now to, I don't know, it's actually worth one dollar and nine cents. It's actually, it's pretty close, right? In fact, if you were traveling to Europe right now, your money is almost as good or equal to the euro. The euro. And you can go through every single one of these countries with your euros, and you can spend your euros in all of these countries right here. Um, Great Britain, they still use the pound. So they use their own currency, unfortunately. Yes, sir. So, the one that you have $10 per year, can you spend them there? Some countries might, they really, they at the point of sale, so at the coffee shop, at the bookstore, you can't spend a dollar. I know, right? You have to go to a bank, you have to give them your dollars, and they will give you euros. You can go to your own bank, you can order it, it's a long process. Um, but in some countries, they will accept the dollar, right? Most European countries don't, though. They really, they would actually prefer you exchange it for the euro, and then you use the euro or their currency in their country. All right, last question on the front side for your prior knowledge. Are borders between these European countries really gone? So, have they really disappeared? No. No. They still speak French in France. They still speak German in Germany. They still speak, well, three different languages in Switzerland, but they still hold true to their own country. They hold on to their own culture. And culture being language, religion, food, everything that makes up the people of that country. They still identify as the French. They still identify as the Spanish or the Portuguese. They will still hold on to their own country. They haven't gotten rid of that stuff. They have their own flag, they have their own songs. They will still identify as their people. But what has erased some of the borders, has erased some of those larger conflict walls has been the Europe. Broken down a lot of those things. It's accepted a lot more 